Hello geometry students. This is lesson 6-5, rhombi and squares. A rhombus, you need to know, is also a parallelogram, which means that any conditions that are met for a parallelogram are also met for a rhombus. But there is an additional uh, condition in that it has four congruent sides. So think about a slanted square. Now a square is special because it is not only a quadrilateral and a parallelogram, but it also meets all of the conditions for a rectangle and a rhombus. So if you're proving that something is a square, you need to check to make sure if it's a parallelogram first, and then if it's a rectangle and a rhombus. If it is both of those, then it is also a square. In example one, we know that we have a rhombus, which means all of our sides are congruent, and we know that they intersect at V, the diagonals. We want to find the measure of W, Z, X, if it equals 39.5, so this angle right here is 39.5, and we want to find Z, Y, X, this big angle over here, okay? One of the things that we know is that the diagonals bisect your angle. So the measure of angle W, Z, Y is twice the measure we are given, which is 79 degrees. We need to know that because if you remember, consecutive interior angles of a parallelogram add up to 180. So to find this big angle over here, ZYX, we need to subtract 79 degrees from 180. That's the measure of angle ZYX, 101 degrees. Letter B, if WX equals 8X minus 5 and WZ is 6X plus 3, what is X? Well, since we have a rhombus, we know that our sides are all congruent, so let's set these two equations equal to each other. 8X minus 5 equals... 6x plus 3. Go ahead and solve for x. You should get that x equals 4, which is what we wanted to know. I don't care how long WX is, and I don't really care how long WZ is, but I do care what X is, and X equals 4. So in number 2, we get to see a proof, a paragraph proof. Now I know what you're thinking, you hate proofs, and so do I, but we have a not so big space, which means it's not going to be very long, okay? You know that LMNP is a parallelogram. You know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And you know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. Hmm. So we want to prove that this shape is a rhombus. Well, if angle 1 is, angle, is congruent to angle 2, that must mean that this line right here, this diagonal LN, must bisect angle L and angle N. So let's go ahead and state that. 
ln bisects angle L and angle N. Why is that important? Well, if it bisects it, 1 and 2 are congruent, and 2 is congruent to 6, and since it bisects it, therefore, angle 6 is also congruent to angle 5. Since it bisects my angles, my opposite angles, theorem 6.18 states that this is a rhombus. So, LMNP is a rhombus by theorem 6.18. You can look that theorem up in your book if you want. Okay, number three. Let's talk about squares. You have here a garden, and you know that these two sides are obviously congruent because it tells you. And it tells you that each corner stake is six feet. So even though these are not marked, these are also six feet because it tells you right here that they're all six feet apart. So we want to make sure that our shape is a square. So the first thing we need to do is prove or state that this is a parallelogram. And it is because opposite sides are congruent. So we need to state that since opposite sides are congruent, The garden is a parallelogram. Okay, so we know that this is a parallelogram. Well, in order to be a square, you have to be a rectangle and a rhombus. So the next easiest thing to prove or state is that it's a rhombus because a rhombus has consecutive or sides that are next to it congruent and we know that these two are congruent so since consecutive sides are congruent the garden is a rhombus Okay, in order to be a square, it also has to be a rectangle. And the, we don't have enough information here to tell whether or not it's a rectangle, even though this looks like a square. We don't know about the angles or anything. So one of our conditions for a parallelogram to be a rectangle is if these diagonals are congruent. So that's what he would need to know. So let's state that Hector needs to know if the diagonals are congruent. To prove that it is a rectangle. Oop, my paper's crooked, sorry. Why do you need to know that? Well, theorem 6.20 states that if a quadrilateral is a rhombus and a rectangle, then it is a square. So, theorem 6.20 will then prove the garden is a square.
Okay, so remember, parallelogram first, then rhombus, then rectangle, and finally a square. Go ahead and turn your paper over, and let's look at example four. Okay, we want to know whether or not this is a rhombus, rectangle, or a square. So first of all, graph A, B, C, D on your paper. So here's A. Use a ruler, please. Okay, so remember, in order to be a square, it has to be a rhombus and a rectangle. So, in order for something to be a rhombus, what has to be true? In order to be a rhombus, your diagonals have to be perpendicular. So if I draw in my diagonals, BD and AC, in order for them to be perpendicular, their slopes have to be negative reciprocals. So let's find the slope of BD. Using our slope formula, we have that, which simplifies to negative 5 thirds. Let's see if the slope of AC is the negative reciprocal. So using the same formula, change in Y over change in X, we find that our slopes are negative reciprocals. So, quadrilateral or parallelogram ABCD is a rhombus. We need to see if it's a rectangle now. In order for this to be a rectangle, the diagonals have to be congruent which means we're going to use the distance formula of our diagonals. So the distance of BD is what I'm going to find first. I'm going to move this up. You can use the distance formula in the back of your book or on your formula chart. Plug it in. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Square it. That's 9. 3 plus 2 is 5. Square. 25. That's the square root of 34. Let's see if the distance of AC is also square root of 34. Same formula. Let's plug it in. And we get square root of 25 plus 9, which, hey, look at that same number. So that means our parallelogram is also a rectangle. So since it's a rhombus and a rectangle, what does that mean? Well, it means that because parallelogram ABCD is a rhombus and a rectangle, it is also a square. It happens to be all three, and you need to state that.
in your own words. Okay, your turn. Look at what we did in the last example and figure out whether QRST is a rhombus, rectangle, or a square. I want to see your proof. On Monday, I should see whether or not it's a rhombus and whether or not it's a rectangle and then your explanation. Have a wonderful weekend.